Welcome to Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we're going to be talking about the seven reasons your pontoon is slow. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about what are some things that could be slowing your pontoon or tri-tune down, how to fix it, how to avoid it in the future, and tips for speeding up the tune. As always, if you enjoy this video, like. Uh, if a question comes to your head, go ahead and just put it in the comments. We always respond. And if you enjoy it, please share it in your social media and anybody that may enjoy it. Brought to you by the Soap Boat Buyers Secret Weapon toolkit you can grab your free copy at boatbuyerssecretweapon.com we're always getting emails from people telling us how much its value it's been we've updated it for 2021 We've added some special videos to it, uh, as well as the boat ownership calculator, which people are really, really enjoying uh, and getting a lot of value. So grab that. Now, let's take a look at what is slowing down your pontoon. Why is it not hitting the speeds you think it should be or that it used to? Number one, it could be that your bimini top is up. Your bimini top is going to slow you down two, three, even four miles an hour. You can see it acts like a big old canopy, a big old parachute, and adds a significant amount of drag. You can see in that, um, that front bimini section how it's just ballooning up. The, the more your boat does that, the more it's going to slow your boat down. You can see that back bimini, it is um, nice and tight and it's not slowing it down as much, but even if just that was up, it would be two to three miles an hour of slowing down. When you add the double bimini and that canopy effect, uh, it's going to be even more, four, five, even six miles an hour of slowing down the pontoon or tritune. So if you're wanting to speed things up, you can just lay those back. Um, that's why you'll notice a lot of times when uh, salespeople are doing a demo, they've got those bimini tops laid back and rolled up so that they're not adding that extra drag and they can show you the top level of speed on a, a boat, which is fine, uh, just as long as you're aware that you're not going to get it with the biminis up. Number two, your pontoons are dirty. Now, if you leave your boat in the water, for even just a couple of weeks in some areas, fresh water, salt water, it doesn't matter. But if you leave the boat in the water, you're going to get some type of growth on it. And every little bit of growth is going to add to the drag uh, on the water side. So we talked about the canopy catching the wind, but that growth is going to slow you down significantly. And the worse that growth is, the slower it's going to be. I've heard stories of people that have lost three, four, five miles an hour, just a little bit of growth. I've seen people lose 10, 15 miles an hour of speed on some of the bigger tritunes because of this excessive growth. And this isn't even all that bad. So if you're losing speed and you leave your boat in the water, pull it out, um, hire somebody to pressure wash it uh, or pressure wash it yourself. Just be, be aware that uh, you want to keep the the stream, the pressure that you use at an acceptable level. Make sure you avoid upholstery uh, and, and any of the uh, other material that could easily rip. Your pontoons are going to be able to stand up to a pretty good bit of pressure. Uh, but get all of that growth off there. Maybe you have to pull it once a year, maybe twice a year, depending on how warm and the algae and the, the type of water you're in. But that can slow you down significantly from you know the mid-season uh, to late season. Once that water starts warming up in your area, that's when the growth really accelerates. The more stagnant your water is where you store your boat, the more growth will happen. The less you run your boat, the more the growth will happen. Anything that just has that boat just sitting still in still warm water is going to really accelerate that growth. So get that nasty stuff off there uh, and, and you'll pick up several miles per hour up to 10 even 15 uh, in some extreme cases next is maybe there's some water in your tune maybe you've got extra weight extra drag um from water in your pontoon it could be a single tune and it's listing you can see that picture where the boat's kind of listing to the um, starboard side 
Well, you've got to get that out of there. Now, it can be difficult to know if you've got water in your tunes unless you sort of have an idea of where your water line should be when the boat is empty um, and, and maybe full of fuel or, or no fuel, um, light on fuel, kind of have the idea of where that boat should be sitting and how it should be sitting. Pay attention. If you're on a trailer, it's easy enough. You can just um, do a quick stop, have somebody listen by the uh, transom, and you can hear that water sloshing around pretty easily. Now, if you do have water in the tunes, if you have a plug in the pontoon, you can pull that plug and it can just drain out like you would on a bow rider or a deck boat and then put that plug back in. Um, I would encourage you to um, pay attention and tilt that trailer all the way up, get all of that water out, make sure you put that plug back in. Now, if your tunes don't have a plug, and that each manufacturer does it different. Some will put a plug in, some won't. If you don't have a plug, um, maybe there's a plug up on the top side uh, that you can access, or you may have to drill into your pontoon uh, and, and use some type of a siphon or a hose. But the question is, if you don't have a plug in your pontoon, how is the water getting in? So you want to do an inspection of your tunes and look for a crack in a weld uh, or a crack or a dent somewhere. The water's getting in somewhere, okay? And if you don't have a plug in the boat, that means that there's a crack or a dent uh, some way or another. There's a hole in that tune, and you want to get that addressed. Um, now, if you do have the uh, the plugs in the boat, that's likely where it's getting in from. Um, you know, anytime you put a hole in a plug, it's it's likely that those um, water intrusion happens. So you want to make sure you get that plug back in there properly and um, and get it as as snug as you can. But also still do an inspection um, because it, there still may be another area where water's getting in. Get all of that water out and that is going to add some speed to your boat. Next is maybe you just have a whole bunch of people on your boat. That extra weight, that extra drag, it's going to it's going to drop your pontoon further in the water. It's going to create more drag uh, and it's going to slow you down. So from, you know, one person on the boat and a half a tank of fuel, maybe you're running 45 miles an hour. Now you add eight people, a big cooler, you fill up the fuel, and you've got some snacks on the boat. Well, now you've just added 700, 1,000 pounds, maybe even more. Now you've dropped that boat further in the water, and instead of 45 miles an hour, maybe you're only getting 41 or 42 miles an hour. Uh, if you add 10 you know, full-size adults and you've maxed out the capacity uh, and you're on a, tr uh, a pontoon with only two tubes, you're going to sink even lower in the water and slow you even more. Five, ten miles an hour of drop in speed from adding weight on your boat is not unthinkable, especially on a pontoon. The tri-tune um, depends on the setup you have. If you've got the larger tunes, basically the more buoyancy, the less impact extra weight's going to have. But it's going to have an impact and it's going to slow you down. Hopefully you don't go as bad as this little uh, booze cruise that appears to be going wrong. The next thing that may happen is maybe you have a propeller issue. Maybe you've dinged up the propeller, you've hit something and it's not in the optimal shape. So not only is the size of the propeller important, but the shape and the cupping is very important. If you've dinged up your prop, you've bent it, um, you've knocked a little a section off by hitting an underwater obstruction, a rock, a log, uh, who knows what. Um, so if you've lost horsepower or you lost speed and you're not sure why, Go ahead and check that propeller. Make sure it's in good shape. If it's an aluminum one, you can have that rebuilt. If it's a stainless steel propeller, you're going to have to uh, go ahead and buck up and, and get a new one. Uh, but that is definitely something that can have an impact on you. The other thing that the propeller could be an issue with the size of the propeller. Um, I've done a whole video on propellers. You can go watch that. I'm not going to get into the details about, um, about pitch and diameter and, and the dimensions. What I'm going to tell you is a four blade prop is going to give you a better hole shot, but it's going to slow you down because of the extra drag of that, um, fourth propeller. Okay. If the propeller is too big, it's going to 
lower your hole shot but increase your top speed um, because it's gonna it's gonna ultimately get to go and and drive more water the smaller propeller the smaller propeller is gonna quickly get you out of the hole um, but you may not have the top speed uh, because it's gonna it's going to cavitate um, and it's only going to have so much RPM. Look at the manufacturer, your engine manufacturer specs on what your RPM range should be uh, and, and dial it in there. Uh, and again, watch that propeller video to get more details. The next area, a lot of people ask this question is, is should I mount my motor on the first hole, the second hole, the third hole, or the fourth hole? There's different mounting positions and there is an optimal mounting position for your boat. Um, if you put it too low, you're going to create too much drag. If you put it too high, um, you might lose um, grip on the water and you'll have a cavitation issue where basically at top speeds or in turns, your propeller is going to spin out and instead of grabbing the water, it's going to kind of get some air in there and it's just going to spin like it was in, in the air, not in the water, okay? So somewhere in there is the right setup for you and to know if you're on track and each boat's a little bit different so this is just a rule of thumb a starting place um, is take a two by four or a straight stick of some kind and run it down the plane of the bottom of that center tune okay where you're riding in the water if you only have a, a pontoon um, you want to go ahead and, and run it off the the side of the pontoon and just eyeball it um, or, or use some type of a string device and, and get yourself set up and you want that to run to be right at the cavitation plate that little lip that um, as kids we used to use that as a ladder to get on and off our, our first boat um, that little cavitation plate is that it's parallel with the water and you can it's just above the prop and what it does is it keeps air from getting in and getting sucked in and causing cavitation so you want that to be even with the running surface if you were to run it straight out now again every boat's a little bit different some pontoons they create a lot of white water uh, and you need to drop it down just a little bit further to get clean water uh, and, and others you may need to have a little bit higher if you're not sure uh, talk to the manufacturer that sells that type of boat and they may have some insights or do a trial and error if you feel like man it's too low in the water and you're just splashing up way too much um, maybe it needs to be raised up a little bit if you continue to cavitate maybe it needs to be dropped down but start with running it off the bottom plane of the boat and seeing where you're at if you're obviously too high or obviously too low if you're having performance issues and make your adjustments from there and finally, uh, it could be a mechanical issue. Maybe you you have uh, a compression issue. Maybe you have uh, need new spark plugs. Maybe you have bad gas. There's a number of mechanical things that could cause your horsepower to drop down from where it should be, um, and that needs to be looked at as well. But first, check all of those other things. The engine sounds fine. It's running fine. Um, the bimini top, the tunes water in the tunes, uh, propeller size, engine mounting height, um, dings in the prop, and then if you're still not at the optimal level, maybe you have an engine issue and it's time to dive into that in more detail. There could be a number of things, I, I can't possibly go through all of them, uh, but, uh, but compression, bad gas, bad spark plugs, uh, a gummed up carburetor are kind of the, the places to look. And, and most of those are going to have another sign other than just you're, you're slower than what you should be or could be. And then finally, maybe it's just expectation. Maybe the boat is running perfectly fine and it is hitting max speed based on the horsepower, the setup, the weight, everything else involved. Uh, and maybe the horsepower is just lower than where you would like it to be. Um, I've done a whole video on what horsepowers you can expect um, based on the different boats and the different, um, the different engine sizes. You can go watch that on the um, the boat buyer secret weapon YouTube channel uh, but basically 
a, a engine is only going to give you so much performance based on the type of boat that it's on and you can watch that video to get more details so um, if you have a question uh, go ahead and ask the question in the comments. We'll, we'll certainly um, we'll certainly respond. Let me know what kind of boat you're shopping for. If you are, if you have a boat, what kind of boat you have. Give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down if you thought this video was awful, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. We would certainly appreciate and join the uh, over 3,000. We're almost to 4,000 subscribers here uh, on the channel. And YouTube has recommended a, a couple videos for you. There's that subscribe button, and don't forget the Boat Buyer Seaf Grow Up and Toolkit if you're in the market for a new used boat pontoon bow rider deck boat and grab your free copy you'll be glad you did